Hey guys, Stat 1800. Uh, what's on the agenda today uh, is a continuation of confidence intervals, but we're going to be looking at what's called a one uh, proportion uh, Z interval. Now, I'm a firm believer that in learning something new, it's always easier if you can embed it into something uh, that you already know. And uh, if you think about what we've done with confidence intervals so far, uh, we have um, so far looked at confidence intervals for means. And the overarching goal of um, uh, a confidence interval is to take a measurement from a sample and use it to make an estimate about an unknown value in a population. Um, so uh, what we've done so far is we've taken, uh, we've, we've seen examples where we can uh, take a sample mean from a, a sample and use it to make a statement or an estimation, if you will, using a confidence interval uh, for an unknown value in a population. So guys, what you have to uh, realize here and just um, kind of tattoo to the brain is that the population value is unknown. The sample value is known, but there's nothing really holy about it because if we closed our eyes and got a sample uh, from the same population, two and a half seconds later, we get something different. So these samples do vary, which leads me to, uh, you know, variation of margin of error. So what we do in terms of creating confidence interval is we take the value that we get from the sample, and we call this a point estimate, and we add margin of error around it, and we subtract margin of error around it to create a confidence interval. But residing smack dab in the center of the interval is the value that we get from our sample. Now, this leads nicely into the formula. So we have our sample value plus and minus the margin of error. And the margin of error deter is determined for confidence intervals for, uh, for means depending on the type of standard deviation that we have. So guys, if sigma is known, we create what's called a Z interval and it's calculated by taking x bar plus or minus our z critical sigma over the square root of n. So all the stuff over here is the margin of error. If sigma is not known, we have to use a different distribution called a t distribution, or we create what's called a t interval and we take x bar and our uh, margin of error changes a little bit because we have to use a t critical value instead of a z critical value because that's just the way things work when the population standard deviation isn't known and we have to use the sample standard deviation in, rever in, uh, in replacement. Now, Moving forward, the type of problems that we want to work now are going to follow the same scheme, if you will, but we're going to be looking at problems that deal with percentages instead of means. Okay, so what do we have here? Well, we have a sample proportion, and the notation for a sample proportion is called p hat. Sample mean is x bar. Sample proportion is p hat. Very similar, but different. We're going to use this to make an estimate of an unknown population proportion. Now, guys, depending on the book that you have, the, the notation for a population proportion can be either P or Pi. Your book is pretty wishy-washy on it. It uses Pi mostly, but there's a couple of places where P actually uh, sneaks in. So we need to have, kind of have on our radar... Uh, that it could be P or uh, capital or or pi, the Greek letter. Kind of makes sense since we use a Greek letter for mu, that we would use a Greek letter for the unknown population parameter as well. So the way we do the confidence interval is the same. 
we have the p hat that is collected uh, from a sample measure, right? So we're going to add margin of error to get the right bound of the interval. And we're going to subtract margin of error to get the left bound of the interval. Putting this into a formula, we're going to have P plus or minus the margin of error. So I guess the million dollar question now is, uh, what's the margin of error look like? Well, it just turns out that's why they pay me the big bucks at Shawnee State University is to tell you things like that. So, uh, guys, the margin of error in these particular types of problems is Z star. We never, ever, 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 never have T star, a T distribution for these percentage types of problems. These are always the Z distribution. And the standard error, which we should remember, from the uh, sampling distribution part that I taught you a couple of weeks ago is the square root of the entire quantity p hat times 1 minus p hat uh, over n. Now, yeah, I, I've taught this cl class, uh, well, I've taught undergraduate statistics at Shawnee State University over 100 times, and I see that students pretty consistently get kind of caught up in, you know, this p hat. I think the confusion lies here. P hat is technically just a fraction, and we call that fraction x over n, x divided by n. n is just your sample size, and x is the count out of the sample. that has the characteristic that you are measuring. So, if I want to know the percentage of students at Shawnee State University who has an ACT of 28 or higher, well, I would go out and take a sample of maybe 100 students, and I would count those that has an ACT of 28 or higher, and I would create a fraction. I think the confusion lies in that a fraction can be expressed as a decimal or it can be expressed as a percentage and all of these are interchangeable and pop uh, kind of rear their ugly heads at different points uh, when calculating these confidence intervals. For example, 52 out of 100 is a fraction, right? It could be expressed as a decimal is 0.52. It could be expressed as a percentage of 52%. All of these are saying essentially the same thing, but they are given in different notation, which is sometimes confusing for students. Now, guys, I think the easiest way, the best way, the most efficient way to proceed from here is just uh, get into uh, uh, a, uh, uh, a problem. So we talked about C fans. Uh, in a um, previous video. It turns out sea fans are just a, a type of coral um, that appear to be in decline in the Caribbean. And uh, let's say that we're a, a marine biologist and we're concerned, or at least would like to investigate, the percentage of sea fans who are infected with a particular disease. So first question, what percentage of sea fans is infected by this disease. I used to know the disease. I can pronounce it, but I, I don't think I can spell it, so I'm not going to embarrass myself and try to spell it and spell it incorrectly. So, of all the sea fans in the Caribbean, what percentage of sea fans uh, is infected by this disease? No clue. I have no idea, uh, and, and really neither does anyone else. So when you have no idea, when your answer here is unknown, so you're wanting now to estimate this percentage, then a confidence interval is the tool for you, all right? 
So what we would do is we would collect a sample and just for illustration let's say that we put on our diving gear and uh, we, we go down and we collect uh, a lot of sea fans from various spots in the Caribbean. We get back to the lab and we find out we have 212. We count those 212 and find out how many have this particular disease. And let's say we find out that 41 have this particular disease of 212. So guys, our sample proportion is going to be X over N. So in this case, it'll be the 41 out of the total of 212. Guys, we can express that. Uh, just gra grab your calculator. Uh, 41 divided by 212 is 0.1934. And that can be expressed, obviously, as a percentage, 19.3%. So when we make a statement about our sample, the 41 out of 212, we can express it as a fraction, we can express it as a proportion, we can express it as a percentage. All right, we'd like to use this now to come up with uh, an estimate because, again, again let's look, guys, let's not get the cart in front of the horse here. This 0 0.9134 is specific to this sample. If we blinked our eyes and sent down another group of divers and they got another sample of 212, this would vary. Therefore, around our P hat, we have to allow room for variation sampling variation by what we call our margin of error, adding and subtracting our margin of error. So guys, what we would have here is we would have p hat plus or minus z star p hat times 1 minus p hat uh, over n. So we just now have to insert the right values. So guys, our p hat, I'm going to use the decimal because decimals are easier to put into um, uh, a calculator. So I'm going to have 0.1934. And let's say I want to estimate with 95% confidence. So we know that the Z star uh, is going to be, uh, uh, for 95%, for it's going to be 1.96. Uh, so p hat. 0.1934. 1 minus p hat, this part is going to be 0.8. Uh, Alright, I'm going to, I, I want to use this video for, for years to come, so I don't want to uh, make a silly um, arithmetic area. 0.8066. Didn't trust myself. And our sample size, as we said earlier, they uh, collected in my uh, fictitious example here, 212 C fans. So, guys, I need to be able to put this in my calculator, and I'm going to just show you uh, how to do this. So I have 0.1934 minus 1 1.96 times the square root of 0.1934 times uh, 0.8066 divided by 212. Uh, now I want all of that under the square root. And uh, so this is going to give me my lower bound, uh, 0.140. So to get my upper bound, I can just uh, go second function entry. Uh, guys, don't get too hung up on this because to do these types of problems, we're going to use stack crunch, which I'll show in just a second. Change that to plus, so I get 0.247. So, 
Our confidence interval is 14.0% to 24.7%. So if we want to express it as a proportion, we express it as a proportion. If we want to express our confidence interval as percentage, we can do so. Now, sometimes your textbook will uh, want you to put it in this form. And that's perfectly fine. The only thing this is asking for is the left bound of the confidence interval. This is asking for the right bound of the confidence interval rounded to however many places that Stack Crunch is requesting. All right, so we can say that there's a 95% chance or a 0.95 probability that the uh, percentage of all C fans that are infected falls between uh, these two values, or there's a 0.95 probability that this interval contains the percentage of all C fans that are infected uh, by this particular disease. Now, guys, it's still easy to find the margin of error. The easiest way, again, is the big number minus the small number divided by 2. We typically, on the margin of error, put plus and minus uh, in front. So we have, what, 24.7 minus uh, 14 divided by 2. So our margin of error for this is, and guys, don't forget the percentage, because if you start out with the percentage minus the percentage divided by 2, you got to end up with the percentage as your margin of error. So that's in contrast to average problems, mean problems. Our margin of error, because we start out with a, an X bar here, it's just a value. It's not a proportion or a percentage. Uh, so our uh, margin of error is not a percentage as it is in percentage problems. Uh, kind of, that's kind of a duh statement, right? So uh, let's uh, see how these things are done in Stack Crunch because this is typically the way that... Um, that, that you're going to do these things, okay? So um, let's see if I can just go straight to Stack Crunch. I believe I can. Um, eh, it's not going to let me do that. Dang on it. All right, bear with me. As you can tell, this is being put up for my Stat 1800 Fall 2017, but. If you're taking it in a future class, it's no big deal. All right, guys, uh, from here to, uh, to get the, um, the confidence interval, I would go to um, uh, proportion stats. I would go to one sa sample, and I don't have my data here. I just have a summary. <clears throat> Number of successes. This is asking for the X. Um, guys, I forget how many. Uh, 41? Yeah. Number of observation. This is our N. And the way I've set this up, uh, 0.95. Um, just go a standard walled statistic uh, will be fine. So you can see that the left limit uh, is 0 0.140. The, the right limit is 0 0.247, uh, just as we got by hand. Now, it talks about the standard error there. Uh, you know, every, everything else I think is pretty, pretty clear. Uh, the proportion that we're estimating is P, all right? 41 out of 212 is the sample uh, uh, the sample proportion is 0.19. This is just the 14, or I'm sorry, the 41 divided by 212. The lower limit and upper limit, that's our confidence uh, interval bounds, the upper and lower limits. But the standard error is the only thing. Uh, guys, the standard error is just the part to the right of the 1.96. So it would be the square root, uh, in this case, of 0.1934 times 0 0.8066 divided by 212. So uh, just uh, just in case you're cons uh, 
curious about what the standard deviation is. It's, or I'm sorry, the standard error. It's everything to the right of the Z critical. Now, if we wanted to change the confidence level, it would be very easy to do. We would just go to uh, proportion, one sample uh, with summary. And again, we have 41, uh, 41 out of 212. And uh, just to change the confidence level, if we want 0.99, for example, uh, we just change it to 0.99. Well, gang, this should be a kind of a welcome relief, sort of, from some of the things we've done previously. Because, um, you know, once you get, uh, a, you know, kind of a fundamental understanding of confidence intervals, Learning new types of confidence intervals um, is uh, is not uh, is not as bad. Now, it's <laughs> easy for me to say, right? Now, let's use the confidence interval. Um, so, the confidence interval we confidence interval that we just um, calculated is fourteen point zero percent to 24.7 percent. So if someone has a claim on record, let's say there's a marine biology journal where someone has done a lot of um, uh, prior investigation and they claim that 30 percent of these sea fans is infected. Do our results support or refute that claim? Well, guys, 30% is not contained in our interval, is it? So the results from our study indicate that the percentage of C fans is actually lower uh, than the prior claim of 30%. It's lower because the entire interval is uh, below. So let's just take a look at um, three different claims. Just fictitious complaints. One journal article says, well, there's only 10% of these sea fans infected. What do our results indicate? Our results indicate that's not true. And because our interval is from 14 to, let's say, 25, completely above, our results indicate a higher percentage of sea fans infected. What if there's a claim that has 20%? Well, guys, 20% is contained in our interval. So our results agree with this claim of 20%. And again, just as a review and a little bit redundant, 30%, what, what did we say? Well, 30% is outside our interval. So our results, because our entire interval is below, indicate a lower percentage uh, of sea fans that are infected. All right, gang, uh, I was going to throw in a sneaky quiz here, but I don't think I am. Just going to end the video. And um, actually, if I'm going to be honest with you, I have a, um, uh, I have a uh, meeting here in about eight minutes, so uh, I need to get off here. So guys, have a great day. Uh, take care.